Okay, until this point our samples were not very realistic. No one is dimensioning by hand or to start or endpoints. Usually we need to figure out something like the bounding box of our objects, the, the contour, the outlines, however it, it will be named. So let's try to dimension those hollow cores in a different fashion. So we will be based on the geometry from the model, from the 3D Tecla model. So let's move a little back uh, to this point, when we get the proper Tecla objects. So I will remove those part lines, endpoints, it will be not uh, needed. So I have the model objects and using the, the official link, I will get the prep or mesh, it doesn't matter. So let's start with the, with the prep. By connecting our model objects to this component, we get the preps, so the 3D boundary representation. And I will try to move a little, yeah, there is Rhino. So I will try to present you how it looks in Rhino. Okay, so here are the hollow coral slabs in the Rhino. This geometry is taken from the official model link. So, okay, we have the preps, and the geometry of those preps is in the global coordinate system. And why it can make the difference? Because in the Tecla drawing, different views can have different coordinate systems. Section is not in the global coordinate system. Some details or views uh, which are rotated, they also are not in the global CS. So we will have to somehow migrate between the different systems. This sample is very simple, so the coordinate systems of this view in the, the Cloud GA drawing is the same as the global one, but it is not always true. So very often we will have to change the coordinate system and it can be done with the orient component coming from the grasshopper when we, where we specify the geometry, so our preps, and also have to specify the, the coordination from, from which coordinate system to, to which. And uh, looking in the properties of the view, we can extract those values. So let's go to the view, view properties, and here we have two coordinate systems, the view one and the display one. And usually you will be using the display coordinate system, but uh, it depends on some small minor details which will be not covered in this video. So, okay, now I am trying to orient it from one coordinate system to the next coordinate system and it should work quite well, I would say. Let's get it out. Of course, in my example, those coordinate systems are the same, so not very informative, but overall that's the idea. Okay, after this orientation, we have to somehow get the contour points, and it can be done in Grasshopper in multiple ways. We will go with the shadow. We would like to cast the shadow for our uh, for our slabs. So if we connect this one, we will get the outlines. Of course, probably it is not the most uh, how to say uh, performant way of doing it. Probably there are multiple better ways, but for the sake of this video, it will be enough. So. By doing it, I get the, the projection, the planar projection of those uh, slabs. And here uh, we will get the contours, so it will be in this case the polylines. But what is the most interesting? I obtained 22 polylines, 22 contours, but I had initially 11 slabs. So it seems that each slab has provided me not one curve, but two curves. And if you see, if you look at those slabs, you will see that everyone has a little different hole. So the shadow, there are two shadows, the, the outer one and those inner ones which are coming from the openings. So for our sample, I will just get the list item, uh, the, the, the zeroed item. So I will want to get only those bigger ones. So now you can see that I am getting only the, the, the curves uh, which usually you are you want to dimension. Okay, 
and each of those curves is a set of points so of course we can get the discontinuity yep discontinuity so now those curves will be splitted into the points when the, when they are not smooth so every corner and it looks like what we would like to have so let's try let's go back to tecla and let's try to use it okay so i have the points and there are some 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 flaws of this uh, but let's check it out and now i get the dimensions of the contour of those slabs but each of these dimension is the separate one there are not all of them why because i'm providing here the tree the tree of points if i would like to get those dimensions in a combined fashion then i have to flatten this uh, to one list so to provide not the tree because tree means that there will be multiple dimension lines but to list and by doing it i'm getting the dimension line and the horizontal way for those hollow core slabs uh, there are some helper tools like these extreme points so it gives you possibility to just uh, get the extremes so the the the, the leftmost topmost and uh, bottom and right yep uh, for, for for the provided set of points. Maybe it will be useful, maybe not. Uh, Tecla is handling also if you provide a lot of points like in the, in the previous fashion. And as I said, here lies the main struggle, how to obtain the points which you do, which you want. Uh, so maybe I see that it is not the most uh, perfor performant way of doing it, but it works. And that's mainly it. You know, you have to somehow figure out how to establish the logic of getting the dimension points because it is the hardest part. And of course, it will be a little different for bolts, for rebars, for steel elements, for uh, precast elements. Every set of objects need a little different approach. But overall, you have to always specify the points and the location of the dimension line. That's the essence. And the hardest one are the points. So good luck. And if you have any questions, please just give a feedback and I will try to reach your needs. See you. Bye.